we're hearing a lot about actually the util better utilisation of the space. And within the heritage framework, has there any been any thought given to perhaps uh, how we can actually make those spaces better and, and better, better use by using an architect or an interior designer to forecast how these rooms can be uh, utilised better? That way, there it doesn't necessarily need to involve a uh, a, a, um, a lease, lease to actually do that, but there must be certain ways. You've got staircases in certain places, doors in certain places, rooms at a certain configuration, and actually getting the best use of those. I'm not a heritage, e heritage expert, however, from the stuff that we've got, the information we've got from the heritage people, is that this is a category one, um, very, very w highly valued um, Canterbury building with a lot of history, and each room has its own history, and for that reason, they would not have considered moving any walls or any staircases, because each part is part of the fabric of that building. And so that's our concern and the, the concern of the program manager specifically around extending length of time because if people want to change the fabric, the way the building is designed, then you get extended um, periods of time which adds to cost. So that is, a, that is a definite risk. So in actual fact, there's no way we can change the interior of this building, so the tender process is, uh, uh, the length of the tender process is quite irrelevant. Um, you can, in the, it actually says somewhere in the program manager's report that there is a clause that says you can, if you can hang on half a second. Um, that works. There we um, yeah, it's accepted that minor alterations may be made in heritage buildings to be code compliant or meet the operational needs of tenants. However, in the experience of people in the, business, in the industry, it's unlikely that you get that okay. And so, and to go through that process adds time. So that's just a word of caution. But that is really important. It's very important. Yeah, and that's why it's really important that the operator has input, not just the heritage people, that this thing actually works well. Um, a Andrew is going to suggest this amendment, eh? Right? Yep, sure. I've got a couple of questions, if I can put them to Peter first of all, just to, to get some staff advice, um, and then, yeah, then, then we'll talk about the amendment. So we've had this deputation, um, and as, as a matter of process and as a matter of respect for the deputy, I just had a couple of questions, Peter, for you, um, relating to the, the issue of perceived or actual conflicts of interest. Um, and there's a, a suggestion in the deputation that the V-based directors should have sat back from the table at the Finance Committee um, and that the V-based directors should um, not be involved in the, the decision today. Can, can I get your view and some advice on that, please? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that view. Uh, I believe the V-based directors are entitled to sit around the table today and discuss the Monaval issue. Um, I think, the, the, and, and it seems to be the, the allegation of a conflict has come up because, well, VBase got this uh, in, in terms of a five-year contract in the Botanic Gardens a few months ago, and therefore somehow today they, they are conflicted. Um, and there's reference uh, extracts referred to from the Auditor General around conflicts of interest pieces put together. I think um, of more interest when you read that whole report that the Auditor General wrote back in 2002 10, they talked about if you've been appointed as a council's representative on a, on a, on a council controlled organisation, which VBASE is, and the Auditor General makes the comment that role will not usually prevent you from participating in authority matters concerning the other organisation, especially if the role gives you specialised knowledge. We're, we're here today talking about does the council publicly tender this lease or not? And in that regard, it's at the very start of the process. And the, while you may say, well, yes, there is a conflict, it is a very minimal, low-level conflict, and also, too, the courts have taken the, views, the view of the years that when you're dealing with an elected member body such as a council, you need to have regard to what are you talking about. If you're talking about things like granting resource consent or liquor licence, uh, the, the, the bar is a lot higher. If you're talking about an operational issue that the council deals with, e.g. public detainer release, then there is not the issue there around um, conflicts of interest to the same degree. So in my view, that assertion is, is, is unwarranted as far as the V-based directors are concerned. They are entitled to vote on this matter today. Mr. 
This is my amendment up there. Now, I've seconded the motion as it stands, I think, so I don't know whether that leaves me not in a position to put the amendment, but this is some wording for an amendment that I've suggested. Okay. Is there a seconder for that? Thanks, Yanni. Okay. Shall I have any discussion on that? Actual discussion? We're finished with questions? Yep. Discussion. Thank you. Um, Look, I, you know, I, I actually thought it would have been more prudent to go out to, um, as, uh, to consider negotiating directly around the previous tenant. I was concerned that the lease was terminated um, quite quickly after the earthquake when we didn't actually have any time frame for repair of the building. And so we didn't know that it would take so long. And obviously with our insurance we're learning a lot along the way. But I recognise that the majority of my colleagues today wish to... Um, go out to some sort of open process. And so rather than going back to the committee, I think it makes sense to put a very strict time frame on that process so that we can get um, try and get that synergy between the operator, the design, the consenting, and the repair. Um, personally, I think this was a unique situation which would have merited um, going out and, and negotiating with the previous tenant who had been there since 1968. I think I, it, would, it would be hard to see, uh, in my view, even if we go out for an open tender, another provider being able to provide the experience uh, and the sorts of service that this one had, but I accept that you know this is a good compromise. Um, I do think it's important, though, that counts as that we do take a consistent approach, and the Botanic Garden Centre is very relevant because that was a, didn't, a process that did not go out for tender, that there was no opportunity for others to... Uh, bid on or be involved with and I do think, um, I've heard the advice from staff but I do question um, you know I think the V-based councils need to think clearly that if you're, if you're going to participate in this vote, it effectively um, depending on if it goes out for an open process or it just goes straight to negotiate with the existing um, supplier, there is a benefit to V-based in terms of being able to enter into uh, the tender process from this resolution. So, you know, I think we do need to be really clear. I appreciate the V-based councillors didn't take part in the Botanic Gardens Centre, and rightfully so. That was good that they stood aside from that. But this is really around a, a competitive process that would enable V-based to enter into, into it. So I think we do need to have some caution around that. OK, um, I, I'm going to leave the V-based councillors to that's take, up for them to to take legal advice as they will, and they may prefer yeah. it from the City Solicitor rather than... Yeah. From you. Sure. Um, so, but but I just think in terms of perception, we need to be really clear as a council. So, you know, I, I, I welcome the fact that we're going to go through this open, transparent process. Um, we need to apply this to all of our things going forward, um, whether it be car parking buildings, whether it be uh, cafes and botanic gardens, whether it be other facilities. And I think that the main lesson from me from this is that when we're rebuilding facilities, we actually need to think about the use and the tenancy at the same time. And probably that's been the gap that you've had finance committee doing the leasing, community committee doing the repair, rebuild um, report. And I think we need to just learn and, and have those aligned so in future we get a more seamless process. Thank you. At the time of the uh, promotion of the council's procurement policy, the key driver was transparency. Obviously that's one part of the overall procurement equation, whole of life cost savings at the end of the day are a part of the whole thing. The reason I wasn't at the October the 6th meeting last year with the awarding of that contract to V-Base was I had a family crisis. My mother-in-law uh, died after a car accident that day, So, but I wouldn't have agreed. Uh, so I wasn't at the meeting, but I wouldn't have agreed with this and would have voted similarly to Councillor Johansson. The fact is we have to have openness and transparency. I fully support this. I don't buy the argument about uh, V-Base directors uh, not being able to take part. That's just drawing too long a bow for me. I can't see how that uh, stacks up, and I agree with the staff advice over this. 
I fully support these recommendations. Your attention, Andrew, that's, is that your actual wording? What's now been put there? Delegate authority to the Finance Committee? Is that what you meant? Yes. Right. Are you, are you comfortable with that, Yanni? Are you comfortable with that? OK, great. It's just a slight change. And Tim and then Andrew. And um, then just really want to clarify Jim. what Yanni said. The V-Base v directors did not take part in the decision with regards to leasing of the Botanic Gardens. And I do get sick of tired of it being re-brought re up again. But I think as a council we have to look at what meetings board members can sort of sit on irrelevant of CCHL, V-Base or whatever, because I mean we are here as councillors, we do step away when advised with regards to, to um, comp legal um, possible um, conflicts etc. So you know, like, let's just get over that one please. Um, personally I think that it, logically I would have liked to have seen the, cu the current or the previous um, leasee kept on for slightly longer to ensure that it gets up and running because Mona Vale is a feature of our city and is going to be with us and hope, hopefully functioning extremely well and profitable for the next 50 to 100 years. So to spend a little time now I think would have invested a lot of time later on. So that's personally my view. I think Andrew's um, um, amendment is an excellent one and a way to move forward. So thank you. Great, um, thank you. Um, certainly on the issue of, of, of conflicts of interest, I mean, the very reason I asked um, the, the question to, to Peter was because I'm aware that there have been different views on this expressed and it's been handled in different ways at various committees and various meetings I've been part of. So it's, it's good to have that advice today and certainly I'm, I'm happy to, to rely on the advice that Peter's given us in terms of participation in the, in the vote. Um, I'd, I'd certainly like to endorse the, the comments of Councillor Johansson and Councillor Livingstone around um, transparency and, and open process. Um, the reason for the amendment um, is essentially the need to expedite the process to allow the new tenant to have the maximum input into um, design and, and fit out outcomes. And that's what really needs to happen to, um, to, to get the best result um, for, for this important facility. Um, the reason for bringing the matter back to the Finance Committee, if we're doing everything we can to expedite the tender process, then my thought in bringing it back to the Finance Committee is that that allows us to also then speed up the decision-making process so that we can get a new tenant in place as quickly as possible um, to, to get the best outcome for this facility. So I'd urge colleagues to to support the amendment today in the interest of speed and efficiency. Thanks. Um, and I, I just want to quickly just touch on, just to remind everyone that we are voting on the amendment here. So that's what I'm, what I'm speaking to, which is the addition, which is around the six-week time frame for the tender process, and then bringing back the recommendation from staff to the Finance Committee for final sign-off. Um, just so I can only speak once, I'll sort of encompass the substantive with the original one, though, there too. Obviously, v Street is took no part in, in the uh, Botanic Gardens. That was a council decision, so that's aside from this. Uh, the only way that I would think that there could be any conflict would be that if the V-Base directors sat here today and put an amendment that V-Base was given the contract uh, to run the Botanic Gardens. So putting it out for tender is probably the complete opposite of any form of conflict because it's saying let's just have the best operator there. And just FYI, VBase isn't tendering for it anyway. So let's just have the best person in there. If we had good, good operators before, they can put their best foot forward and they'll be considered. And if you limit your options, you're going to ultimately limit your outcome. So we want to have the best possible people in there and, um, and the staff will go through that process and we'll ensure that we'll get that. Um, I'm actually going to vote against the amendment. Sorry, Andrew, I understand the intent behind it and respect that, but um, for two reasons. One is, around, um, round, one is around speed and the other one is around governance and management. Um, the six-week time frame, I, I just don't think that it's really governance's place to tell management you know, how, how to manage this. They, they hear what we're saying, that we want um, to expedite it as much as possible, <laughs> and, and I feel that, um, that that's been captured. Um, and two, I think I just think it holds it up too. Then once the staff go and do their management job, and then to bring back a management issue back to governance, I just think is a real crossover of governance and management. We're saying what we want. We've we've got a good recommendation there. It's gone through the committee process. It's then come to council. We've sort of thrashed it out again. Now we're changing it again, and it's saying 
basically that governments want to involve ourselves in management. So I trust the staff, and that's why we have staff, and they're the ones that are actually better qualified than all of us around the table to make that call. So I kind of want to back them and let them do the job. So uh, voting against the amendment because I, I think it's a crossover of governance management and slows things down and doesn't really alter anything. Respect the intent of it, though, so please don't take anything personally. All right, well, if we're discussing the amendment, um, I understand what you're saying, Jamie, but I think that the wording there captures it quite well when it says employees best endeavours, so it's not saying you must come back in six weeks. And 6.4 really is a stimulating 6.2, but in a different format, so I don't think it's going to change very much, so I'll be supporting the amendment. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering whether we can actually put the... Um, the amendments separately, 6.3 and 6.4. I hear what Jamie's saying with, with the, the time frame issue and, and I sort of noted before hearing staff saying it was probably going to be fairly tight to be doing this sort of work. Um, so I, I, uh, I, I don't really have uh, a lot of support for 6.3 in that respect. Um, but regarding the sort of sensitivity of the thing, I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable with it coming back to the Finance Committee for approval. Um, and I respect Jamie's uh, uh, point of view that there is, yes, there is a crossover between um, governance and, uh, and management, um, but I'd be happy if those two resolutions were put separately. Um, uh, con concerns have been expressed around governance management separation and, and so on. I mean, m my view is that this is, is a question of, of governance setting the agenda in terms of the timeline. We've questioned staff to make sure that, um, you know, I mean, my original intention would have been to put a four-week timeline on this, which I understand now on the advice of staff certainly isn't achievable. Um, six weeks sounds as though it's going to be a push, but we, we can do that. I'm sure if staff aren't capable of doing that, they'll be coming back to talk to us. But what we're doing is sending the strongest possible signal of, of our expectations based on staff advice of how quickly this can be delivered. So, um, yeah, j just to address those points. Okay, thank you. That was nominally a right of reply. Um, just very quickly, I don't understand the 6.4. So, we don't make decisions on tenders, is that correct? Not normally, but we're suggesting in this case it comes back to you because this has gone to you in the first place. Okay, so I'll put them separately as per the request. Um, so, the, what you're currently voting on is 6.3. Okay? Everyone clear what they're doing? Can I put that? Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No, no. Declare that carried. You can, if, you, if it's requested, you certainly can. Yep. Right, declared that one carried. Thank you. And now you're voting on 6.4. Good. That just comes back to the Finance Committee for their decision rather than being delegated to the Corporate Services Manager. Okay, clear on that. I'll put that. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Declare it carried. You want another division? No, no, no. You want another one of those? Or do you just want to record your vote against it? Well, it's hard to do it before you press the button. <laughs> <laughs> right, do you, want a, do you want a division? Okay, so you've got your things in front of you, if you can just press that as well. Declare it carried. <laughs> right. Okay. 